welcome to another Cascade crochet video. Um, I promised you a couple of videos today so I've just had a look at my list and I've got this one and I'd like to do one more but I'll see how I go because I'm still still recovering from my um, post Christmas to New Year's illness. Um, so today I wanted to have a chat to you about um, prioritizing your hobby when it becomes work because um, I just did a video on you know sort of what you need to consider um, if you want to turn your hobby into a job or a side hustle um, so now how do you prioritize this side hustle or this job when it's actually a job and previously it, it had just been a hobby so it's something that you do for fun to de-stress um, you know to make gifts of people or whatever. So, um, the first thing you need to do is actually, it's, not, it's going to sound a little bit odd, but is to talk to the people that you live with. And so you need to explain to them that, okay, now when I'm doing, you know, when I'm making whatever it is that you're doing, um, so crochet in my uh, instance, so I had, had, had to have a chat to my husband and I'm like, okay, now while I'm crocheting, I'm actually designing or I'm actually working on a commission. So he's well, he's well aware of sort of my commission and design schedules because as soon as I get a commission, I'll tell him straight away. Um, as soon as I think of an idea for a design, I'll normally bring in a sketch for him to have a look at. It. Um, he's incredibly supportive. So he's always like, that looks great. He's, th he's there with good feedback. Um, so yeah, talk to the other people that you live with just because they need to know that sometimes when you're actually working on what used to be a hobby, it's now paid work. So, um, so they'll know, you know, not to come in and, and uh, sort of go, oh, can you do this? Or can you stop what you're doing to do that? Or blah, blah, blah. Like things, things that, you, that you could have easily done um, before you know you were on a on a schedule for a commission so you know you might have a month to do a commission Dep depends what it is you know you, they might say hey do this blanket and whenever it's ready it's ready or they might say hey do this blanket and we really need it in three weeks and you kind of look at it and you go yeah i can box that out as long as i spend like every second of my free time on it so you need to um make everyone else aware that that's what you're doing you're not sort of doing it for fun it's like no this is a job okay so once you've had that discussion hopefully the people around you respect it you might need to sort of give them a gentle reminder now and then um, just because they may be so used to seeing you doing this for fun um, so then how do you do you actually prioritize it with yourself so I know a lot of you will still be working while you're while you're designing or while you're taking on um, side projects. So what I find handy for myself personally um, is scheduling, and like it's it sounds kind of obvious. It sounds maybe a bit silly, but um, I actually use a planner. So you can see here it's got like you know your top priorities. You know today's to do list actually sort of like breaks down your schedule for the day um, and then like any notes in there so something like that where you can say okay I'm at work say from six till two just as just as an example as an example and then you're like right so you know from two till three I'm traveling home from Three till five, I'm having a little bit of relax, but I'm like doing household stuff, like five o'clock is dinner. So I don't really get me times sort of starting until about 6.30. So then you have to think, okay, so I've got, you know, you might go to bed at nine o'clock so that you can get up at, at six um, or a little bit later. It just depends on how much sleep you need as well. Um, so that's like assuming sort of you know, eight hours of sleep and that you get dressed like as quickly as I do and, and rush out the door or that I, that I used to. Maybe you work at home so it's easier that you can set, you can literally just roll out of bed, 
and then roll into your work chair. Um, <laughs> again, that's a me thing. Um, so yeah, you have to sort of think about how many free hours you have in your day and then where um, sort of the, your, your, new, your new job is going to fit in into that. Um, so this might actually give you a little bit of pause before you take on um, sort of like larger commissions or commissions on a tighter time frame. Um, I do recommend if for your first couple of commissions, um, if you try to negotiate a longer time frame, which it's easier with friends, so you might say, you know, um, you know, your mum's birthday is in like three months. Can I have, you know, like ten weeks to finish this? And they might say, yep, yeah, that's fine, that's cool, all good, because then that gives you time to like make it, block it, whatever needs to happen. Um, or you might even uh, work on a project and just yourself just say, okay, I'm aiming to finish this project within a certain amount of time and then you can just time yourself um, if you don't have like a commission going. Maybe it's something that you would like to sell at a craft fair or like just, um, you know, markets or things like that. Um, it really does depend. I know, I know I say um a lot, I don't know why. I like, I trained myself to stop saying it, but the more I go on these sort of train of consciousness uh, discussions with you guys, the more I just, the word just pops into my head. So I'm gonna try and make a conscious effort to stop saying it. So you need to prioritize it also within yourself. So like I said, I, I use a planner uh, that's not all the time, so I might put it in my phone, I might just make a note of it. Um, so I might use that beautiful planner uh, that I have there that was a gift from a friend. And then, you know, each day you get more used to allocating a specific time to work on these projects that you have, whether it's your design, commission, or making gifts or anything like that. So this can also um, this can also be useful for gifting, so for presents, for Christmas, things like that. Um, and you know, you you have to work on a time frame to get something done. So just you need to, I guess, be be gentle with yourself. Um, if you think that you may not get things done in time, it just lets you know that next time you need a little bit more time because you know you do have to manage all of the rest of your life around this. So what I'd like you to take away from this is that prioritizing your hobby when it becomes a job is not sort of just encompassed to you. It's something that you have to discuss with the people around you so that they know if you're doing this, you're doing this for work. Or that, you know, if you say, all right, I need two hours crochet time now, they know, okay, it's for work. And then you can also say to yourself, okay, I need two hours to crochet now because it's for work. I mean, the payoff at the end of the day is amazing and honestly, I wouldn't trade pattern designing for anything else in the world. It has been challenging, but it's incredibly rewarding. Um, that's why I'm doing these videos because publishing my first pattern was incredibly challenging. So. You know, I need, want you guys to be able to learn from my mistakes. Well, not mistakes, just my um, complete lack of knowledge of anything to do with what goes into the process. Okay, so I hope that's helped you a little. Um, so make so basically, the steps to 
prioritize your hobby when it becomes paid work is to explain this to your family, possibly your friends, whoever you're living with, so that they know that when you're crocheting or, or doing your hobby, it's a work thing, it's not fun and games, it's not playing, you know, it's, it's actually a paid activity. Um, it's also looking at your day and allocating at least a little bit of every single day to it. So you might say, oh, well, I only have 45 minutes on my lunch break to crochet. Take those 45 minutes. Just doing some a little bit of something is better than doing nothing. So it's sort of the, um, I guess the phrase is like, why, why, it's like, why do today what you can do tomorrow? You kind of want the opposite of that. It's like, why do it tomorrow when you can just do a little bit of it now and then you'll get a little bit further ahead and a little bit further ahead. Sometimes you just need it to work in small increments and that's fine. You know, you don't have to say, I'm going to spend 10 hours today crocheting. Um, first of all, oh, it's going to be such a pain on your hands. <laughs> um, but second of all, it's not always realistic. And honestly, even if you can spend 10, 10 hours a day crocheting, it might get a little bit tedious by the end of it. So you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to burn yourself out. Um, and that's going to be my next video. So I hope you learned something. You know, make sure every, everybody knows that this is for work. Make sure you know that this is for work. Do a planner if you need to, but allocate a little bit of time every day to working on this as your job because you need to keep working at it. Um, you might lose your crojo, so your, your crochet mojo, or whatever, you know, whatever odd terms your hobby has for when you look at it and you're just like, no, I don't want to do that. Um, so cr with crochet, it's crojo. So you might lose your crojo, but you really have to push through it. And I will do a video a little bit later on. Not today, I think I think three is gonna be like the absolute most for me. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm absolutely peppering your feed today, um, but sometimes you have to push through it. And yeah, I will do a video. Uh, today is Sunday, let's, let's say maybe tomorrow. Um, or Wednesday, I'm not sure about Wednesday, um, we've got got some household stuff going on on Wednesday, but it'll be within the next seven days that I'll do that video for you. Uh, anyway, that's enough from me. So now, new lipstick, yes, new lipstick from 20 minutes ago when I showed you the, the Kat Von D lipstick. Um, this one is a Kmart lipstick. So it's uh, QXX Cosmetics. It's a lip crayon and the color is City Slicker. So yeah, lip crayon. It doesn't stay on forever, but it's super easy to reapply if you need to. And the color is so pretty. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like literally just the pinkest pink that ever pinked. Anyway. Um, I'm gonna go upload this video for you and then get on to the next one where we talk about avoiding burnout, which is so important. Okay, love you guys. See you real soon. Mwah.